What's up, guys, man? I'm back with another recap slash rant between the Falcons versus the Panthers. I guess that I was at the game, so sorry this game, uh, this video was late. But um, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet because I got some Domino's to eat. Yo, Domino's, please sponsor me. I love Domino's. I've been eating it forever. But anyway, uh, to start this thing off, man, like I said in my last video, usually when we play against the Panthers, I'm not worried. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, we're going against the Panthers. It's an easy win. It's an easy W. I haven't really been worried about the Panthers since, like, the D'Angelo Williams days, you know, the Jarek L. Kajari, um, you know, those type of days. But, of course, it seems like, right, when we start going on, you know, a run, we lose against the teams that we should always beat. This aggravates me so much, man. Uh, this aggravates me so much. Um, this game... You know, it was still one of those games where you looking like this, you know, the whole time. But the last seven minutes of the game, well, the last seven minutes until it reached five was like it was only two excited minutes of the game. Um, this this game was embarrassing, man. To lose against the Panthers is completely embarrassing. I'm tired of that keep pounding stuff. I'm tired of that. It's just the fact they didn't have Christian McCaffrey. Sam Darnold had more rushing yards than our running backs. And not total altogether, but Sam Darnold had 66 yards rushing this game, man. Uh, but before I start off, I would have to say the music was better this game. The music at home in the stadium was way better this game. I talked about it last time, and I told y'all, I think they watched my videos because every single person that I mentioned, their song played. We got some egos. They was piping it up. We got some head busters. We got some get on my level. We got a um, nuck if you but We got all kind of stuff there. So shout out to them for actually playing some good music for a change. And football music they even play. I told you it's not even just about rap. It's just about different, you know, uh, you know, Atlanta stuff. Play something that everybody can vibe out to. Play something for your city. They even play Florida, Florida Georgia line. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool with that. I don't mind that. It just... Thank you, because it's funny. Every time you played it, DJ Tigger is like, like somebody told him something. He was looking to the camera like, yeah, they told me about this, so I'm playing it. If you in here, you know I'm playing this music. So anyway, I'm glad they played some better music because I told you as much as I like, you know, the other slow songs and stuff like that, we're we not trying to hear none of that, man. We're we, we trying to go to war out here. We're trying to take some heads off respectfully, as they call it. Anyway... The Panthers 19, the Falcons 13. I told you it's an embarrassment to lose against the Panthers. And I know it was an embarrassment for Mike Davis to get outran by his... Well, he's not his former quarterback, but he got outran by his new addition to the team. Mike Davis was 9 carries, 44 yards. CP was 9 carries for 35 yards. Sam Darnold was... Eight carries for 66 yards. Their quarterback, Sam Darnold, man. This aggravated me so much. This dude, C. Hubert, which is their starting running back, had 24 carries, 82 yards. They ran it down our throat. I thought our team was a better run-stop team. Uh, we've been doing good. I thought they used to always say, oh, the Falcons are a great run team. We just can't stop the pass. They did not do anything against us. Sam Darnold, 13 completions out of 24 attempts, 129 yards. He didn't. He didn't do anything. Sam Darnold literally just ran around like a maniac. This is why I don't like when we lose these type of games, man. It felt like a trap game. Uh, you know, lately I've been talking about the NFL, but this is how, like, the old ways, a trap game. The game that everybody think the Falcons going to win, but we lost. You know what I'm saying? Because they were, the Panthers on the 3-0. Christian McCaffrey gets hurt. Oh, they on a losing streak. All the Falcons on a winning streak. So now we go against the Panthers, and we the Falcons always beat the Panthers, and now we just end up losing this game. I understand we have Kevin really. I don't care about none of that, man. Uh, of course, I love to have him on the team, you know, be playing. But they didn't have Christian McCaffrey, bro. They're a one-dimensional team, but they still ran it down our throat, and it aggravated me so much. I know they got DJ Moore over there, who actually had four receptions, 59 yards. Um, they got Robbie Anderson. He, I guess he got shut down. He didn't really do anything. But it just it aggravates me, man. It, it, it aggravates me so much. We lost against the Panthers, bro. Like, the Panthers without Christian McCaffrey. <sighs> to a guy that's his first year, like, with the team. It's embarrassing, man. It's embarrassing. It's like, we dominate this team. 
just for them to come down here to beat us 19 and 13. And what's so bad about this, I told you, besides the fact that it's the Panthers, it's like, if you didn't know, if you was at the stadium, people really, like, was like, um, they were talking about the Braves. Like, when bad stuff was happening in the game, people was like, they were just saying, oh, oh. people walking at the stadium was like, well, I'm done with the Falcons. They was like, well, I hope the Braves do something. Like, it's like they just shifted. They didn't care. It's like the team makes us stop caring. Right when we, we when we get invested into it, that's what I need to say. Right when we get invested into it, it's like they just make sure that we they just let us down, man. And I'm tired of it. It's like how many times are we going to be like, oh shoot, okay, we started off bad, now we three and three, we about to go positive, we about to go four and three, and now we three and four. It makes no sense. It's it's stupid. We can't win no game at home, but we can win games in London. We can win games over there in Miami that we usually lose. We usually, <laughs> we usually lose against Miami. We win against Miami. We win in London for the first time. We lose against the freaking Washington football team that Matt never lost against. And we lose against the trash freaking Panthers that I respect Chris McCaffrey, but the Panthers as an organization against us, we have owned them as an organization. So that's why I say it. I respect them as what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? They got a Super Bowl. Do they got a Super Bowl? I think they no. They went to a Super Bowl. They never, they didn't win one. The Buccaneers, the Saints got one, but we don't have one. The Panthers don't have one, and to lose against them, man, it's 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 not a good feeling. And to lose at home, especially if y'all been a fan of the Falcons, especially since Matt Ryan came in from 08, at least to probably like the Mike Smith era. I'll say it like that. Going to the games. We rarely lost. The only teams we lost against back then was like the Saints and probably the Patriots and I think the Chargers at one point, if I'm not mistaken. We and the the and the Packers in the playoffs. We didn't lose against nobody but the Saints, the Packers, and probably the Chargers. And then later on, I think the last year of Mike Smith, that was when the Geno Smith come back, the Brian Horry come back, the Browns and all that other stuff. It's just like when we go to home games, we don't expect to lose because when we had when we was at home, we built like a foundation. We built that like that city. Like when you come here, you are gonna have a tough game. That's why I keep trying to tell y'all the new stadium is a freaking distraction, bro. It's like the acoustics in the building, the, the crowd. It's like they're not even in the game. It's 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 not it's not it's not fun, man. Like the game, I'm trying to tell you, is is something changed. I understand a part of the reason why the games aren't the same for, you know, what I'm saying on some Vin Diesel type stuff, family. You know, what I'm saying you used to people come to the games and they're not there. I understand that. You know, what I'm saying I get that part of it. But as far as the atmosphere, as far as how the stadium is, it just don't feel the same. The Georgia Dome was perfect. They tore it down for no reason. People go there to seem like they go into a club or like a, I don't know, like a carnival or circus. That's what it seems like. They just go into like a fancy new mansion that they just trying to chill out and have fun. I'm all for some people going to have fun, but it's like they don't care about what happens in the game at all. Uh, my other thing I forgot to mention the first time, it's about time they do the swag surfing while we're winning instead of when we're losing. It's still, you know what I'm saying, I'm tired of... I'm still over it. It seemed like every time they play that song, like I know we about to lose a game. But anyway, um, like I said, the stadium is just a distraction for some reason to me. Um, it's just crazy, man. I just hope that something changed. My boy Matt, it's like right when, and I got something to say too. Some people said some stuff on the train. Matt Ryan, 20 for 27, 146 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. One of them interceptions. I didn't see the other one, but the I think the one he threw to um, who the heck did he throw it to? Was it Jeremy Chan? Hold on, I got I got to see who it was because Jack Thompson, S. Gilmore. I think I think the first one he, he threw it to S. Gilmore. Jack Thompson, you know, be a good player. I oh, got Hassan Reddick over there. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I I heard somebody on the train, some dude. You know, you know how our city are so quick to turn against our quarterback. You know, before they blow, oh, my boy Matt. You know what I'm saying? They was, I remember when they were chain MVP in the stadium back in 2016. And then now, 
My boy Matt has been doing four quarter comebacks, been doing final drive comebacks. The second this game happens, somebody said something about Matt on the train, and everybody was like, oh, man, get out of here, man. Matt says, boo, you know what I'm saying? They was going crazy. They was like, throw him off the train, throw him off the train. And I'm like, you know, I got my Matt Ryan jersey. I'm like, here we go with this, man. Here go the city turning against Matt again like it's all his fault. When we lose, oh, my gosh, it's all Matt Ryan's fault. When we win, it's somebody else's fault. It's somebody, it's the reason why we win besides Matt. And I told you, I get tired of that so much. Um, He's the only quarterback people do that for. He's the only quarterback people do that for. They blame him for literally every single thing, for everything bad instead of everything good. And, you know, ESPN, they asked him, oh, is Matt Ryan underrated? And they was like, no, he's exactly what we think he is, basically. Um, he should have never lost the Super Bowl. He should have audible. But nobody talks about Russell Wilson audible on the goal line. They just blame it on Pete Carroll. When it's Russell Wilson, it's all the coaches' fault. It's all Pete Carroll. They never talk about Russell Wilson when it comes to that game. Uh, obviously, you should have gave it to Beast Mode. But they never talk about Russell Wilson in that game. But in that other game, they always talk about, oh, it was Kyle Shanahan to get him to the Super Bowl. But it was Matt Ryan the reason why they lost it. You know, it's just stupid stuff, man. It... it it really aggravates me the fact that people always do that. And, you know, I understand people like to get behind their race. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Because some people in the train, they was like, oh, well, we should have got Cam Newton. You know what I'm saying? I like Cam. But, like I said, mainly as the people of our skin, the main people that's talking about Cam Newton, if you look at it from it, I, like I said, I understand you want people to succeed. I understand I'm getting into a different topic. But if you're talking about Matt Ryan and Super Bowl, Versus Cam Newton in the Super Bowl. Who had the better performance? Matt Ryan. Who didn't die for the dang ball? Cam Newton. Who in the post-game interview didn't just walk out? And you know what I'm saying? Who was more professional? Like, let me just keep it like that, man. I was with the whole dab and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, I was with Cam. I was with, I was with everything that year. You know, I wanted to win the Super Bowl. But it's like for the people that's like, oh, we should have had this person. We should have had this person. It's all Matt's fault. Y'all don't realize how much Matt has really did. Like, people don't understand how when we had, what was his name, Harrington, Joey Harrington, and then Matt came, we was we was a laughing stock, man. Matt Ryan gave us hope. After Vic, you know, what happened, what happened, Matt gave us hope, man. And I understand we haven't won the Super Bowl, but we got there, and I do believe it was coaching the reason why we didn't win or – the NFL being the NFL, the reason why we didn't win, because that was completely bullcrap. And I think ever since that game, I've been like, what the heck is wrong with the NFL? I told you, I questioned my integrity. And my last video when I was talking about, oh, how it don't feel the same this way, I guess the NFL has just become more predictable to me because I've been watching it for so long. I don't know how it goes. I don't know what it is. You know, they got Vegas. They advertising betting sites now. I don't know what's up with that, man. You never know with the NFL. Um, young way cool won the game for us last week. This week he misses the dang field goal. It, I don't know, man. They just do stuff like that. I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, oh, I have to mention this. Eric Harris once again, one second away. <laughs> this guy Eric Harris could be the best player on the team on defense, but he's always a second late. The dude could have dove and picked the ball off and had a pick six for us to win us the game. But, as always, he's one second short. The ball hits the ground. Eric Harris is the best player that's not the best player. The dude is like one. He's one second. I'm, that's his nickname, Eric One Second Harris. And people can take that the wrong way. They can take it any way he want. But the dude is one second. They might as well should have changed the number to number one. Uh, because he's one second too late. Eric Harris could have made so many plays for us this season, but he's one second too late. Number 23, Eric Harris, the freaking free safety, strong safety, whatever the heck they got him on the death chart. Number 23, Eric Harris, get your stuff together, man, please. You could have had like three picks this season. You could have uh, had, what, three tackles for losses. You could have been like player of the week, player of the month. Team of the week, something, man. You could have, you could have had defensive player or something, something, man. You could have had the game ball, but this dude, I don't know what's wrong with him, man. He gotta, he gotta get better. His instinct is just too slow. His reaction is too slow. He's there, but he's not there. Um, 
So it, he it just makes him look bad. Like just don't even be in the play next time. Just 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 move, man. Because it looks bad that you always messing up every single game. So anyway, this game. By the way, guys, I'm, I'm trying to make this short because I said, like I said, I want to eat my Dominoes. Uh, but Grady Jarrett, Grady Jarrett, right now is aggravating me, bro, because the dude that's supposed to be that guy. They always talking about him like he's the second coming of Aaron Donald. But Grady Jarrett ain't been doing nothing, man. Grady Jarrett hasn't been doing anything. Um, I don't know what the heck Dan Pease is doing right now. In the preseason, we were sending pressure from every angle. I think that our best pass rushers is our best pass coverage linebacker, which is Deion Jones. Deion Jones, the one that's screaming up in there. Grady Jarrett, I don't see what he's doing. Uh, the Ogie Joby dude, I don't know if he they put him out there. Uh, but yeah, did we even get a sack this game? Did we get a sack? But we hold on, what the heck? But we didn't get no sack this game. No pressure, no nothing. Sam Darnold just running around like a maniac. No cubic contain, no spy, just no nothing, man. And it's just aggravating. It's, it's aggravating. Like I said, it's embarrassing. It makes me like, well, like what's wrong with this team, man? I, Julio is at Tennessee. Calvin really is hurt. I mean, the same thing happened when we went against the Dolphins, right? Or in London, we didn't have this player. We didn't have that player. We didn't have Calvin in. Last week, we came back. We should have came back this time. The fact, it's like, they didn't have Christian McCaffrey, bro. And we lost this game to a team that we always beat. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um... I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I said everything. Uh, like I said, CP, five receptions, 37 yards, a touchdown. CP, the best, best player on the team. It looked like they're trying to mix Hayden Hurst in there, but they're not really doing a good job at it. They should do a two tight end set, like I said, have two receivers on the outside or three tight ends. But it don't, I don't know, man. I feel like we're just underachievers. We have so much talent, and they don't know how to utilize it. And I still think it comes out to the coaching. You can say what you want about Matt, but Matt is doing his job for the most part, and it still comes down to everybody around him. And that's why I say it, it aggravates me when they're like Aaron Rodgers, the best thing ever, but Aaron Rodgers only got one ring. He did go, go through us to do it. But every other season where, oh, Aaron Rodgers won MVP. Aaron Rodgers goes all the way. Aaron Rodgers does this. Aaron Rodgers does that. The second Aaron Rodgers lose, it's not his fault. It's everybody else around him. Oh, my gosh. It's, bro, I keep trying to tell you, Aaron Rodgers, when he won that Super Bowl, he had the best defense in the league, bro. He had Clay Matthews. He had B.J. Rodgers. He had Charles Wilson. He had Traymond Williams. He had... Nick Collins, which is one of my favorite free, uh, safeties of all time. He, his whole freaking defense had a commercial. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had all of that. And now it's like Matt Ryan only had a top well, top five, top ten defense once in his career. Once. 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 And that was when we had, I believe, the worst coordinator in history was Steve Carse- uh, Sarkeesian. Or maybe that was 2013. Something like that. I think our defense was great when we had Asante Samuel and all of them. Uh, they cool. That was that was a fun time. That was literally one of my favorite times of being a Falcon fan because of the the vibe, the energy, everything around that season. They cool with dancing. I had the day cool hat. Um, like I said, William Moore back when they had the D block. Sean Witherspoon, Mike P, um, Stephen Nicholas, even Curtis Lofton at the time before he went to the Saints. That whole, like, the fact that I know all their names, that whole vibe for the team, you know, watching D-Block on YouTube, feeling like you're really a part of the team, feeling like you're a part of the locker room, um, like, this vibe and out, like, that's the vibe that I miss, man. Like, that's what I'm saying that I don't have no more when you go to the game. It's like, you don't have that feeling that you're a part of the team no more. It's like, you're just like, oh, you're coming, you're looking at this. Oh, I hope you have a good time. Come next week. Go home. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that vibe no more. It just it just seems like I'm just going, looking at something, and I'm going home. It don't have that, oh, I'm a part of this. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't. It's like you. I don't. I don't feel it in my soul no more. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel it like I told you, like that Drew Brees stuff, that team, that city, that home. You don't. You don't feel none of that no more. Um. So I don't know. Maybe that's what happens. Like what they say when you get your heart broken too many times, you become like, oh, it's just the same old, same old. So I don't know, man. But anyway, I guess that's it. I gotta eat my pizza. Um, let me know what y'all think. The next game. Let's see. Well, we don't have a home game, I think, for the next two weeks. And the Patriots come down here. Guess what? They never, <laughs> we never beat the Patriots here. So, let's see how that goes. Maybe we'll flip the script the opposite. I don't know what Arthur Smith is going to say about this game. But, as you see, the guy has, the guy has aged um, since he's been our coach. So, we go against the, oh, we go against the Saints next. So we go against the Saints next. Jameis Winston, who took us like what three years to beat, and we played him in New Orleans. Uh, I don't know what they're doing right now against the Bucks, but what's crazy about that game? We'll probably end up winning that. We'll win against one of the tough guys, and we lose against the people that we should beat. That's how it is. We lose against Washington. We lose against just straight bums, man. We lose against the freaking Panthers of all people. So we'll probably end up going up against the Saints and be four and four on the season, and then I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, let's see what uh, let's see what happens. We hopefully the Braves end up winning, or we'll be in the laughing stock of the Braves having one game away and another team come right back. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think about anything else. Like I said, CP as far as player of the games on the defensive side. Um, on the defensive side for us, boy, I, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't think nobody deserves no game ball for nothing, man. We shouldn't be uh, celebrating them being terrible on offense. I told you the best player on offense is CP right now. I love my boy Matt, but on the stat sheet it shows that he's one and two this game. I know everybody's gonna blame him anyway, um, and it's just crazy how you know people are like, "Oh, get him out of here, get him out of here." But we all wanted Justin Fields and what the heck is he doing over, over there with the Bears? We wanted Trevor Lawrence, what he's doing with Jacksonville. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. People don't look at stuff like that. What is Justin Fields doing? What is Trevor Lawrence doing? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so. Come on now. So where's Cam? Where's Cam Newton right now? That's what I thought. So see y'all in the next one. My boy Matt Ryan is the last one standing. Uh, if y'all check out his career, then y'all y'all come y'all come back and let me know, man. Because my mo- my boy Matt is doing what he has to do, and he still needs stuff around him. I know he has the talent, but what, he still needs a top defense, man. He still need people to work with him. He can't be the superhero all the time. I understand he got comebacks. He got this. He got that. But you can't let this man just have to do it every single week. People need to be all together. The coaches need to be on the same page. That's why I said Mike Smith was the best coach. Because he was the only coach on the sideline that you see Matt hug. Matt be next to. He listened to Matt. Dan Quinn was just on the sideline by himself. Arthur Smith. He's just like, it's like they have no connection. It's not organic. That Mike Smith, Matt Ryan stuff was organic. This stuff just feel forced. That brotherhood was full of crap. Dan Quinn, this man, Arthur Smith. I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, man. I don't know if he's trying too hard. I don't know if he think that we're still, he's still in Tennessee. But they need the game plan around the talent. We got Hayden Hurst, bro. We got Kyle Pitts. Let Hayden Hurst and Kyle Pitts be on the field at the same time. like Especially this game. If Calvin really is gone, why is Hayden Hurst and Kyle Pitts not on the field the majority of the game? Like, come on. But anyway, I'm out. See you on the next one. Uh, we're going against the Saints, like I said. We'll probably end up winning that win. And then we'll go 4-4. Four and four. Some Hank Aaron type stuff. Braves winning World Series in a perfect world. That's probably how they end up doing it. So anyway, see you on the next one. I'm out.